Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Gardener. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. In today's video, I'm going to share with you uh, my rare succulent collection. Uh, now, I'm not sure about all of the names. I have not found the names of most of these. Uh, but I'm going to show it to you one by one. Now, the reason why I'm not going to give you a lot of the care uh, requirements for these uh, because one, it's going to be very difficult for you to find these etuarias. Uh, probably you might find one or two of them. Uh, or maybe the seller might have it but the colors are going to be very different because I'm going to share one of them uh, for an example uh, you will be able to see how much of difference things uh, happen I've already made the video I'm sure you guys have seen how succulents tend to change so I'm going to introduce you these beauties one by one uh, I'll talk a little bit about the care requirements for a lot of people who do not have a lot of experience of handling rare succulents please do not get into rare succulents and hybrids right away it is going to be a very big challenge usually they do not survive most of the time if you do not have a lot of experience uh, rare succulents do not survive either they get rotted uh, by less experience or at times the weather the climate does not uh, agree with them and due to which they start to uh, their health starts to get worse and then they slowly die off so let me show you the first one that i have now i'm not very sure about the name of this variety uh, but someone did ask me what variety is it uh, now this is a korean agawairi species but it looked absolutely different i'll put the picture on the screen uh, when i seen the picture and i was like i want to get that succulent i bought it from the seller and after uh, four months this is how it tends to look like uh, and you can see the picture let me put the picture on the screen on the right hand side that's the picture how it looked on the seller's website and then this is how it looks now uh, i don't even know if it's an aguadis variety because it doesn't look like an aguadis variety anymore it looks like another species altogether this is why it's so difficult to understand succulents here is another uh, succulent that i had um, i am not very sure about the name but you can see the amount of babies that are uh, the amount of pups that are there beneath uh, it looks absolutely beautiful i have to take out all of those dry leaves but an extremely beautiful succulent is also blooming uh, over here i have uh, alfred uh, now it looks very similar to opalina but it is not an opalina it is an hybrid i'll put the parentage on the screen uh, it basically has three parents now i don't know how does that happen but uh, it is one of the rare succulents that i have uh, it's called as alfred i'll put the entire name uh, i think most probably the name is of uh, the person who created this hybrid uh, hats off to him uh, with all due respect it's an absolutely beautiful hybrid uh, succulent that has been created it looks a lot like opalina but it's not opalina a lot of people did tell me that oh this is an opalina but it's not uh, it is uh, the hybrid called as alfred and uh, so this is another beautiful uh, etuaria called as etuaria snow ruby uh, not again sure if that's the correct name or it's given by the nursery or the seller but it's an absolutely beautiful it has a very thick farina and uh, it has this jelly formation uh, on the crown area the more you expose it to direct sunlight for five to six hours then the uh, color red is going to be even more evident but absolutely beautiful succulent it kind of reminds me of uh, etuaria lawi but i'm not sure if it's uh, anyway related to it or probably one of the parentage could be of lawi because lawi is one of the succulent that is used in uh, cross pollination very frequently it's a very common succulent it's the seller's favorite succulent to cross pollinate with etuaria lawi because etuaria lawi is a natural variety natural species of succulent and it tends to accept uh, different uh, pollinations and different recipients it's always open to uh, new creating new hybrids so this is uh, my etuaria snow ruby and absolutely beautiful and the last one that i have over here again i don't know the name uh, this was a korean uh, import it was mentioned as uh, etuaria sp dot sp dot means species so it was just labeled as uh, etuaria species i'm not sure what exactly is this variety but trust me guys it looks like a candy that is coated with sugar it looks like uh, those candies that uh, those chewable candies that you have sweet ones it looks exactly like that 
I mean, how beautiful are these uh, succulents? Now, the, issue, the care requirements, what I can say overall, again, as I said, I'm not sure if you're going to find these uh, available online because it's very difficult to get these. Uh, usually, the sellers have it, but uh, they are on like first come first basis. The moment you see it, you need to buy it immediately. Otherwise, they are sold out because of the amazing beauty. Now, this little guy over here, I had actually purchased three of them, but two of them died because I didn't know the watering uh, condition for this one. Uh, I basically overwatered it and it happened to die. So this one I always tend to keep it underwatered. Uh, it does not like a lot of sunlight. That's what I realized. So it's kept an indirect bright light with very less watering. This is one information that I can give you about this variety. It's very finicky. I lost two of them. So this one has been with me for almost. Uh, this was before COVID because uh, during COVID and after COVID, uh, uh, we were not able to import any succulents from China. So this is one of the import my friend used to work in China. So this was probably an hybrid that was grown in China. Probably they imported it from Korea. I'm not very sure, but uh, the other two did not survive uh, probably because of my watering schedule. I was not aware about it, uh, but the others have been doing quite well. Now, all of these have been getting a good amount of morning direct sunlight. Uh, the watering, I give the same watering for these guys. What I do for my other succulents until the soil is completely bone dry. I then go ahead and water it. I give it a good amount of morning direct sunlight for five to six hours. They are all in uh, this one is in paper creed pot and the rest of them are in concrete pots and they're doing absolutely fantastic. I'm so sorry. This one is in the paper creed pot. This one is in a paper creed pot. These two are in a concrete pot. This one is also in the concrete pot and I think it's working out really well because the earlier two one were in the plastic container and probably that is one of the reason it did not survive. So all of these are amazing beauties. Uh, I'm not very sure if you guys can find this online, but if you find it, I think that's going to be the best thing. But if you are a beginner, just try to avoid these for time being. Once you get a good amount of experience, then you can uh, buy. I'll have to search for some more of the rare succulents I have. I have to search them. They might be somewhere. But as of now, these are the five. Uh, these are my favorite ones. So I wanted to share with you guys. So for these four, I give good amount of morning direct sunlight for five to six hours. Uh, very porous spots but this one i water it very very less i think the last time i watered it was uh, probably two or three weeks back still haven't watered i don't see any sign of it asking for water so i'm just going to leave it as it is i'm quite scared because this is the only one that's left and i do not want to lose it i don't think i can import the succulent once again so it's like a kind of an endangered species in my garden so i do not want to lose it so guys i hope that you like this video if you did please hit the like button if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing to it until then take care stay safe and keep propagating